Welcome back to Cards and Comics, guys. Today, I want to talk about collecting 90s cards, but in a different way that's also an old way. And um, what I'm showing on my screen here right now is, you know, the idea, first of all, that there's a lot of cards in the 90s that are bringing a lot of money in. This isn't really the point of the video is, you know, the amount of money. But the idea here is that there's a lot of different kinds of cards that have tons of great eye appeal and, um, you know, just some of the nicest looking cards, you know, um, in my opinion, ever made. But some of them are very expensive. And the thing is, is like, in some cases, I just want to have a card from the set. And... You know, like, for example, 97 PMGs, um, you know, the red and greens. I would love to just own one green card of someone, maybe from the team I like. Maybe a player I remember from college or something like that. Like something that has some relevance, but it's not Barry Sanders. is not, uh, you know, the best player to get um, that could cost $10,000 for some of these guys. And so that leads me to think that there's got to be a way to collect cards a little bit differently. Um, you know, than just team collecting, player collecting, or even set collecting, because who can afford to put together a set of uh, 99 Skybox Premium Rubies when the Barry Bonds is a $10,000 card alone? I mean, I can't afford it. And I think for collectors who are on a budget, I have an idea that might appeal to them in terms of collecting 90s cards, but in a way that may be a little bit more uh, economical and still collect cards from sets that are the best looking and, and most desirable sets, you know, that were made. And so what I'm proposing is, is something a little different. And if you really look at um, collecting like on, you know, I'm going to use the PSA set registry as my guide here to some extent. Um, but if you look at the PSA set registry, and I'll, I'll show you two different um, uh, set registries here. But it's very common, um, you know, for, say, pre-war collectors to do what we call type collecting. And this is a good example of type collecting. And this is PSA set registries but it's collecting the different types of bags in the T-set, right? So you've got the different, you know, one bag per um, brand, and then you have, you know, American Beauty bags, you got, you know, different bags, so you're collecting either one type of bag or one type of bag from each of the different bags, you know, um, the different companies that made, you know, T-cards. There's a lot of ways to do it, but this is traditionally called type collecting, or you get one, you only need one card from the set of that type, and, and then you have a check mark. And the way it relates back to um, 90s cards would be this, is that, you know, I just showed you, you know, rubies and uh, Fleur Brilliance, 24 karat golds, number to 24, to where the number one cards in those sets are like in the, you know, five, ten, twenty thousand dollar range now, but I still think those sets are awesome and cool. I'd love to own just one card from it. What if there was a type of set registry out there, or just you know, you don't need PSA, but it's just a way to spur interest in this. To just you get one card from that set, and you build a couple set registries around the idea of you know the coolest sets from the '90s, or you know, and you could do it a lot of different ways. I mean, you know, this is a you know a way. Um, to spur collecting and set registry and, you know, whether you like it or not, does spur a lot of collectible interest, a lot of collecting interest, because it's a way to kind of have pr progress. It's also a way to share interest with other collectors who are pursuing the similar set as you. You can see there's, you know, 141 different sets registered underneath this um, complete back, um, you know, type set. And I really like the idea of like, you know, what if, you know, you did it this way, you you said uh, the 100 greatest insert sets of the 90s, and you only need one card from that set, it doesn't matter who it is, and you get a check mark. So a Fleur Brilliance, uh, you know, Embossed, uh, Refractors, um, you know, whatever it is, like, you just say, if you have one card from that set, 
and you know you 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 know you you complete that check mark for that that sign. You could do it based on parallels, the uh, the greatest refractors from the nineties. Um, you the 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 greatest cards number to one hundred or below. I mean, there's like a hundred ways to skin the can. The idea is that if you you if you created a few of those set registries, I think um, it not only would uh, you know give people more imagination on how to collect from the nineties because you know I do feel like sometimes the pricing scares people off from even starting. They're like, oh my god. You know, I don't even know where to begin because the price is, you know, I, I want to collect, you know, Barry Bonds, but he's so expensive or King Griffey Jr. or, you know, Peyton Manning. Those cards are already, you know, skyrocketed or Barry Sanders. It's, it's just, you know, a problem for people just getting into it versus like, hey, you know, this is a good way to learn about the 90s. Like, you know, do a type collecting, you know, look at all the different cool insert sets. Here's like the top 100 insert sets with nice top 100 parallels or whatever you want to call it. And it's a way for people to kind of get their toe into it and see, oh, I really like this set. So I'm going to get more of that set or, or I really don't like this set. So, you know, even though I have one card from it, I don't really care for it. You know, I'm not going to get any more cards from that set. Or I'm not going to pursue some of these cards. And I think it's a good way to teach people about the rarity of some cards, uh, the, you know, the, um, the designs and just how the cards are different. Cause when you get them in hand versus seeing them on a pick screen on eBay, you'll you know, kind of really realize how cool <laughs> and just how unique some of these cards are really made because the manufacturing process, you know, some, for some of these cards just doesn't exist anymore. Right. Um, so I'll give you another example. So here is another list of type sets that's on PSA set registry. And you see that this is really not um, very full. There's only four different type sets outside of that uh, T card uh, back sets where you had a lot of different versions of collecting uh, T206 backs. You know, there was a lot of sets there and here's only, here you only have four. But you can see that they're very popular. There's 484 people registered sets for, you know, basically having one card from every top set uh, until now. That's a very popular way of collecting cards. It's like, I want one card of every set. And, you know, and, and people inside that, if you go into these 484 sets, you'll see some people do it by team. Some people do it by Hall of Famer. They'll have one Hall of Famer in every set issued from 1951 to now. Or, you know, so now it would be kind of like you proposed Hall of Famers, right? Uh, car players, you pretty sure are going to be Hall of Famers. But that's sort of what a lot of people do. That's a very common way of doing it. And here's like, even on the vintage side of it, um, I'll show you this Ultimate PSA, or this T one's pretty cool, but I, I looked at this one as well. This Ultimate Sampler Vintage Set. Um, click on that and then you can kind of see um, view set checklist and you can see what's in the set this set's pretty cool and i think this is a good guide for how you could do a 90s version of this is you know it basically has um it has identified the the best or maybe all of them i'm not sure it's all of them but you know you can see here is all these pre-war sets here um you know, to now, and it's basically said here is, you know, all these sets. And if you get one card in each of these sets, you completed that set or that part of this, you know, that, that, that portion of the checklist. And it's like, if you get one in 28 Allen again, or boom, you're done. If you get one, you know, male cut plug, you're done. You know, and I think that's kind of cool. I do feel like this is, and I've made the, you know, I have made uh, the statement before um, that, you know, collecting 90s cards is very similar to collecting pre-war cards because of the variety, the different shapes, different sizes, the, all the different technologies being used in, in, you know, 90s cards. There was similar things happening in pre-war cards, not to the same level of technology, but, you know, Ramblies are much different than a T206 card. You know, T227s look very different than Mayo Cut Plugs. I mean, it's just the cards are very different. And so I feel like that is a cool way to look at it says like you get all this kind of like 
you know, if you complete that set, you'll get all this variety and of, of, of cards and shapes and sizes. And, and I think that's a cool way of looking at, um, vintage cards. Um, you know, the kind of the journey of vintage cards. And I think you could see the similar thing as, you know, the best of the nineties or like, you know, the best insert sets are like one card from every, you know, insert set, the nineties or something like that will be a very fun way. And I'm thinking about actually, uh, creating some set registries to send to PSA to create. And, you know, my, my hope was to, to kind of reach out to people, you know, on my channel, uh, people who collect nineties cards and see if they think, a this would be an idea that would they like to collect like this? Is this a way that they would actually, you know, try to, um, think about creating collections and B, you know, what, you know, kind of registry sets would you like to see? You know, like I proposed like some like top 100 or, you know, the um, every, you know, like one card from every insert set that's not a one on one or something like that, you know, and make it really challenging. Like, you know, you have to get, you know, all the best of the best, but you have to get all the Diamond Kings and you have to get all the kind of crappy inserts too. Would, would people like that? You know, something like massively big, you know, like, like you know, um, four or 500 cards in the set. Or would you like it just to be like, 10 or hundreds of cards, you know, keep it to like some other different themes. And again, with the registry sets, there's no real um, limitation. It's just your imagination and what you think, you know, you would like to collect. And I think, you know, I would like to, um, you know, um, submit something to PSA just to see if they'll accept it for one thing, because sometimes they won't accept your sets, but also just to see if people would, you know, find that very interesting as a way to collect these cards for the 90s. So just the idea throw out there is a different way to collect or, and it's based on a very old way of collecting. Um, you know, again, kind of started, I first heard about it with, you know, the T206 collectors and how they collected, you know, one back, you know, all the different types of backs. And that's how I remember uh, this kind of collecting. So let me know in the comments what you think, what sets would make sense for you? You know, all refractors, you know, one, one card per every refractor set made in the nineties, like something like that. Would that, appeal to you um you know let me know in the comments and uh you know give me your feedback and we'll see what happens all right see you next time in cards of comics bye